Hi, my name's Angela Gladman and I'm a project manager at the North Central Catchment Management Authority. I've been working on the Caring for Capacity project now for the last 10 years. Uh, the project is funded by the Victorian Government to the tune of about $7.2 million. The aim of the Caring for Capacity project has been to protect and enhance the riparian vegetation along the length of the Capacity River for the benefit of the aquatic life and the plants and animals along its length, beginning from the Great Dividing Range up near Wood End right down to the Murray River at Echuca. So over the last 10 years, the CMA has worked with hundreds of landholders, providing nearly 100 kilometres of river fencing to keep livestock out of the waterway, controlling weeds on over 400 hectares of the riparian land adjoining the river, and also undertaking nearly 300 hectares of riparian revegetation. The CMA has also conducted a whole range of community engagement events to encourage people to better manage the riparian land. And this has involved uh, working with schools, land care groups, angling groups and thousands of people who now have a better appreciation and awareness of the Compassity River. In 2022 we actually expanded our River Detectives program which is about schools getting involved in undertaking water quality monitoring along the river. So we now, now have 11 schools involved right along the length of the river undertaking monthly water quality sampling. We also have 10 community volunteers and also members from Tungarung Land and Waters Council undertaking regular monitoring uh, along the Compassity River. Marcus Smith. We live at 81 Porkers Lane in Ashbourne. We are, I don't know, maybe a kilometre or so from the headwaters of the start of the Compaspe. Love our property. Moved here having come from Echuga, which is the other end of the Compaspe, so there was some novelty in being at the other end. We're 75 acres, give or take. It's a mix of sort of open grassland at this end, then it gets a few more trees, and then the, the top end is basically just virgin forest. We don't farm it per se, but we run animals, most of them are pets. A um, couple of steers, a couple of heifers, some sheep, chooks, horses, Shetland pony, that sort of thing. I'd love to get some pigs, but I have some opposition to that, we'll see. So our approach is to try and yeah, improve the ecological value of the property without sort of the pressure of having to make a dollar or maintain stock health or anything like that. So it's, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a hobby. There were things about the area that I, I thought I understood. We had a quick education as to what gorse was because the section along the creek in particular was quite prolific. The cattle had full access to the, the, the entirety of the creek on our property. It doesn't take much to realise that that doesn't work. It was around that time that you guys came onto the scene with the, the offer of some help. It's been a wonderful partnership. You know, there's always an element of reluctance to have outside groups or authorities coming into your property and there's always that worry that you're going to lose some sort of control over it but the project itself has been I think enormously beneficial for us and has enabled us to do what we wanted to do and would have done if we'd had the money and the resources. The starting point being dealing with the abundance of gorse and blackberry which I was yeah, I must admit I was struggling with and didn't have a huge amount of expertise initially so that was really really helpful. It was helpful with the conversation as to what we could do, how to go about it, fencing it off in consultation, a, a decent alignment of the fence and, and then obviously once we could keep the stock off just going through with trees that were suited to the area, to the climate, that were native which I, you know, I, I, don't, I wouldn't have even known where to start knowing that the sort of our stretch is contributing to the the health and well-being of the creek overall is, or the river overall is, it's it's a nice feeling you know and even even the small sense of satisfaction we get when we see people stop on the road and look out across over the creek and you know on occasion you'll get comments about how good it looks and that sort of thing yeah no it's gone from something that needs a lot of work to a real a, a real asset to the property i think and and i don't mean asset in monetary terms but asset in just of just pure enjoyment and lifestyle and relaxation and yeah, satisfaction. It's all to the benefit of the property because the more you can sort of get it back to what it was and how the systems interact and intertwine to create a healthy environment and working with what's here rather than trying to impose something that's not native. Yeah, no, it's, you can already see the benefits, the tangible benefits. I always made a point, just a, a big rap for caring for the Compassby. It's one of those things where it's a government funded project that actually does what it says it's going to do and delivers.